In this section, we're going to take a look at some more advanced dimensioning tools. We're also going to take a look at some ways in which you can edit dimensions. First of all, let's open up a file that has some. Go to the dimension example file, open it up. Now here we don't have any dimensions. Let's create some very quickly. We'll just use the angular dimension. Pick your first point, and then pick a second. Place it. Now you can right click to start the exact same command again. Pick your two points, and there you go. Okay, so you can see adding dimensions is actually quite simple. Just find the dimension type that you want to create and pick your points. Now you can also dimension out in outer space, I guess. You don't have to pick anything. If you do, though, it's kind of pointless, but wherever you pick, that's where the dimension is going to go. Now you notice that this says 100 feet. Now, if I were to click up here you know, in approximately the same distance, see, well, why is this 100 feet and this is 2.47 feet? Let's erase that to get it out of the way. Well, that's because when I used my O snaps, it snapped to the line work that's in my model. Here, I'm snapping to nothing, so it's picking the paper size length. So when we print this out, this line is going to be about 2.5 inches long. So it's at a scale right now. And that's one thing to keep in mind. If your dimensions don't look right, maybe your O snaps were turned off. Press F3 to toggle them off or on. You can type in OS to get to your drafting settings, and you can set up your running O snaps however you want to. Now let's say you want to make changes to your dimensions. You can do that. Open up the Properties panel by pressing Control and 1 at the same time. Now select one of the dimensions. Let's pick this one here. Now we can change the color of it. We can override it. Now if we do this though, remember everything you do here is going to override what's done in the layer manager. It's also going to override what's done in your dimension styles. So keep that in mind. We'll keep it at the civil style because I want to show you some things that are going to happen. Now here you can change your arrow types. Just select the box and pick the arrow. And there are a lot of different arrow types that you can pick. Let's go with a small dot. Now what's cool is I can set one arrow to be one thing, and I can set the other arrow to be something else. You may need that to happen. That's up to you. But let's make them both the small dots. We can even change the arrow size right here. <laughs> Those are quite large. Let's go to point 0.3. We can turn off or on a dimension line. Let's keep them both on in this case. So you can change almost anything here. You can turn off or on your extension lines. Now it has extension line 1 and extension line 2. Now, how do you know the difference? Well, that's a great question. The first line you draw, or the first point you pick, will draw your first extension line. The second pick is the second extension line. So if I click this and I scroll back down to my extension lines, let's turn on extension line 1. That's right here. If I create another dimension over the same thing, but if we select this one and let's turn off the same extension line, which was extension line 2. Now, as you can see, the red line is missing over here on the bottom left, and on the top right, the line is missing. Well, that's because we started here for the red dimension. This is point 0.1 and then point 0.2. For the green, we went point 0.1 and then point 0.2. So you have to keep that in mind. You can have dimensions, and you've gone back and forth, and so that can make it difficult if you're trying to manage your extension lines. So just keep that in mind. It's not the end of the world by any means. But just keep that in mind if it's not behaving the way you think it should. Now, you can change your extension lines. You can change your arrowheads. And you can also change your text. Right here it shows you the actual measurement of the object, which is 100 units. And 
I can override the text right here in this box. Instead of editing the text with a text editor, I can just come right here and I can tell it whatever I want. And I can press enter or click somewhere else and it overrides my measurement. Now, if I click back in here, hit a space, and if I put in my less than and greater than sign, it'll put in the actual dimension. So that's something you can do. Now, the fit of your dimension can be a little tricky here, and there are a lot of settings that you can try. This will force a dimension line. Sometimes if something's too narrow or too short, it won't draw it, and that's up to you. You can tell it the best fit, or you can tell it to push text arrows in and out. Let me show you with a smaller dimension. We have our smaller dimension. It fits right in here. But if we select it, let's change the style to bold. Now you can see here, because the text is bigger, it automatically pushed the text outside. If we select it, we can tell it to fit the text in a different way. As you move your cursor over this, it will give you a preview of what's going on. So this will move just the text out and leave the arrowhead and dimension line in, or it'll kick everything out. It's up to you. You can force the text inside regardless of what happens, or you can move the text and add a leader. So there are a lot of different ways to edit your text, especially with the properties palette. And you can come down here, change the fit, change your units and your alternate units and your tolerances. With dimensions, you can dimension in more than one type of unit. So you can do it in inches and in millimeters at the same time, or feet and meters, etc. You can also edit your dimensions with a text editor. You can type in ED or double click on the text itself. You have your text editor up here. You can change your style. You can make something bold. You can change the font right here. You can change the justification you know, from a middle center to like a, a top left. You can put in columns, symbols, etc. You have all the same formatting tools in the dimension text as you do with regular text. So I can type a really long note in here if I want to. Now it may not make any sense to do something like that, but you can. You can move around with your arrow keys. You can even press enter to do a carriage return, and you can do that as many times as you want. And there's your text. So you can do a lot in here. You can put a full note in your dimension object. And you probably saw earlier too that you can grip edit your dimension. So let's say I went to the wrong spot. I can grab a node point. All of your associated dimensions will have a node point. The node point is this little spot here, then there's a gap, and you have your extension line. That node is the point where you're dimensioning to. And I can change that. I can make it go anywhere I need to. And I can even put it right back. So that's a handy way to make a change to a dimension. Now, sometimes things don't work out the way they should with associative dimensions. You can change the line work and they don't go with it. That does happen from time to time and it's very frustrating. Well, you just make your grip edit here and make your changes needed. You can grip edit right at the arrowheads to reposition the height of the text. If you grip edit the text, it'll move the text. And depending on the fit settings, the text will even move the dimension line up and down with it. Like in this example where we had the leader come out, you could do something like that. So all of those dimensions that we had in our properties palette are very important to know and to realize. Find the type of settings that you need to make the types of drawings that you want to make. And don't forget about the ribbon. You can access many different tools in the ribbon, and don't forget to right-click.
select your dimension, and right click. And you can get to some things right here, like dimension style. If you've created a dimension style, and then you've edited your dimension, like we did here, you can select it, right click, go to dimension style, and save as a new style. Just give it a name. Click OK. And now you'll see up here, you have a new style. That's a neat trick. And that's a really cool thing to do if you're working in someone else's drawing that you've never worked in before, and they've done some really weird stuff with their dimensions, and you just can't find the right style that they've used because they've you know, tweaked or customized those specific dimension objects. Just right-click, Dimension Style, and Save as New Style. You can also pick a style and apply it to that dimension that you've selected. If you go to Other, it'll give you a lot bigger list. So select your object, right click. You can also change the precision of the dimension. So let's pick this one here. Right click, precision, one decimal. So that's a really cool trick. You can take away all of your style overrides. And while that also removed our associativeness to the specific spots where we were at before, you can erase. And of course, you can get to some of your basic editing operations uh, that you have here available.